there's a lot of things happening. At the same time, I will also say, and nobody said, nobody so far has pointed directly a finger at the future king of Saudi Arabia. There are large numbers of people being prosecuted. He's very angry about it. He's very unhappy about it. And I did mention it to him very strongly, and he answered very strongly. But uh, they're prosecuting large numbers of people. Uh, that was a bad event. Well, this morning, President Trump there contradicting the CIA and the United Nations as he claims no one's pointed a finger at Saudi Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman for the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. I want to bring back CNN International Diplomatic Editor Nick Robertson. So a United Nations investigator released a report that says there's credible evidence the Crown Prince is responsible for Khashoggi's death. There are many others who say this killing could not have happened without his directive. Why would the president contradict that report? Possibly he hasn't read the detail of the report. Possibly he doesn't agree with the central thesis of the report. What the UN special rapporteur, special investigator here says is that this murder was carried out by officers of the state, officials, Saudi officials, that it was carried out, you know, on official Saudi premises, that this was an officially sanctioned operation, not saying it was go that it was going to be murder, but an officially sanctioned operation. And therefore, under a state structure where the crown prince is effectively the head of the state, then he bears responsibility. And under the sort of uh, human rights uh, 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 if, if under sort of human rights law, then he should be under investigation here, that he should not only be under investigation, that he, there should perhaps be sanctions placed against him. So she was, the, the UN Special Rapporteur was very, very clear that Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman does bear responsibility here for Jamal Khashoggi's murder. Um, and President Trump doesn't seem to take that on board. Um, the Saudis have said in their defense that this was uh, an official rendition, but it was botched and went wrong, and the team on the ground went rogue and murdered Jamal Khashoggi. But the evidence put forward in this more than 100-page report, a UN report, counter is a counter narrative to that uh, Khashoggi's killing and dismemberment was discussed before he ever set foot in the consulate so that raises a, a, a clear concern there what President Trump said is that the Saudis have put 13 people on trial and maybe pulling some others in for investigation but again, until the special rapporteur from the UN made her investigation, nobody knew the names of the people who were on trial. We now know them thanks to, this thanks, thanks to that report. So there's a lot of evidence out there, as well as whatever President Trump's intelligence services have provided him in their estimation that the Crown Prince did have a level of responsibility and knowledge about this murder. So th there's a lot there that President Trump seems to be ignoring, and the reason that he says that he wants his close relationship is because of trade, because of the many billion dollars worth of uh, business done with Saudi Arabia, and much of that uh, military hardware being sold to the kingdom. Plus, of course, um, being a supporter of President Trump's policies in the Middle East. Well, and the president did mention Turkey as well, saying he gets along well with uh, President Erdogan. But President Erdogan at the G20 a news conference has come out and said that it is a priority for the international community to get all the facts and details on the perpetrators of the murder of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. What does this do, uh, Nick, to the relationship between the U.S. and Turkey? Um, it puts additional strain on the relationship, although I don't think the Turkish president is going to go to the wall on this issue. He's had a lot of other evidence, and this was, again, something that came out in the UN Special Rapporteur's report, this, this um, eavesdropping at the Saudi consulate, that, which gave them not only the narrative of the killing of Jamal Khashoggi, but what led up to it, uh, uh, what led up to it before and what happened in the days afterwards as well. Um, the, the Turkish authorities have not put that out themselves. Um, so I, I think that the, that the uh, Turkish president president soft pedals a little bit on this issue because he doesn't want to disrupt his relationship either too greatly with Saudi Arabia. But what he was very clearly saying today is that this murder was committed uh, within Turkey's jurisdiction and therefore the trial should be within Turkey's uh, jurisdiction. So the, 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 and, and the President Trump was speaking to Erdogan as well, the Turkish president, about the complex issues of buying Russian missile systems and trying to buy highly sophisticated U.S. aircraft aircraft 
at the same time. Um, that was another issue that came up. So there's much in the balance there in that relationship at the moment. Yeah, much in that region. Nick Robertson, thank you so much for being with us. We appreciate it. Okay, just in to CNN, President Trump says that he agreed easily in his meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping to continue allowing U.S. companies to do business with telecom giant Huawei. But he said he would hold off on fully discussing the company's fate until talks wrap up. Washington fears the company could use its technology for spying. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer warned against fully reversing the ban on the company. Here's his statement. Huawei is one of the few potent levers we have to make China play fair on trade. If President Trump backs off, as it appears he is doing, it will dramatically undercut our ability to change China's unfair trade practices. Again, the president said he's going to hold off until the end of the talks to determine if Huawei can do business uh, with U.S. companies. Right now, it's on a Commerce Department entity list, uh, which means that it's banned from doing uh, business uh, in, in many respects with the U.S. because of national security concerns. We'll, of course, bring you anything from the prominent players on Huawei as the president uh, continues to move forward on these talks with China.